Okay. So I'm in Hungary for round 13 of the 2022 Formula One Championship. We had a really amazing race, very difficult one for Ferrari at France. And before that, I was at the Austrian Grand Prix, where also they had a bit of problems. Now, what you don't know is that for Formula One, I am forbidden to shoot any kind of video inside of uh, inside of, of the track. So that's why I'm I'm outside to take this video. But uh, I think I have uh, a workaround for this problem. So you gotta bear with me and. Uh, we're gonna get through this together. Come on, let's see what we can do. on Thursday was that Sebastian Vettel is going to retire at the end of the year. Recent years have not been kind to him in racing sense, but uh, what he has been doing, uh, trying to turn and draw attention towards environmental issues, uh, it's something that I admire really deeply and I've come to, to like him very much. Later I saw him coming through the paddock to do his TV interviews and he seemed very different to what I have seen only a few weeks ago in Austria. He was much more relaxed, he was buzzing, he, was, uh, he looked happy and relieved. And you can tell even from, from the pictures that I managed that he was uh, all smiles and, uh, and yeah. Uh, it seems that uh, this decision came on his terms and he's really happy with it. In the past I have not been able to take a, a really cool shot of Lewis Hamilton and I really tried to do so on this occasion. The Mercedes Hospitality Unit has this really nice glass on the side of, uh, of the stairs so when he got around this there was this really nice uh, reflection that I wanted to utilize. I needed some time to to figure out where to be exactly, how to position myself and uh, his personal trainer Angela Cullen uh, helped me with uh, testing the idea and then when it came to the actual shot of Lewis uh, I needed to wait quite a bit for him to get out but this time I said I'm gonna be persistent and I'm gonna wait until I get it and thankfully I got really nice light I got some clouds and some uh, nice blue sky in the background and this combined with, with his uh, yellow pants worked really well in terms of color. Um, for the next picture, I'm gonna tell you later. When Friday comes along, it's time for some track action. I started my first practice session on the outside of the, the chicane. It is the famous shot with the village and the water tower behind. Now, when I was previously um, at this track in, back in 2019, there was no branding on the Armco on that side and I was able to get really, really close and the cars did look even meaner that way. But unfortunately, fortunately for Formula One because they have more money out of sponsorship, but unfortunately for us photographers, we are not able to do that anymore. After realizing that I kind of got stuck <laughs> on the on the outside of the track with not enough time to to get around I tried to make do with uh, with what I had at this particular moment so uh, some panning shots from from the apex of the turn and then went even backwards uh, and used uh, a longer lens I think I used the 200 to 500 for these uh, these panning shots and because I had so much time I was really able to drop the hammer down and to get these these shots which I am pretty happy with. All in all that was kind of my first session at the Hungar Ring. Interestingly the second session was held later than it usually is. It started at 5 and the hour of running that we had was all with this 
gorgeous golden light. I started my session from above the pits uh, and in particular above Mercedes pits. I was able to get these really nice images of first George and then Lewis exiting the pit lane. And then I tried my hand at uh, panning the cars going down the, the main street and I, I think I got some, uh, some interesting images there. I gotta admit, I had a slightly frightening and embarrassing moment uh, in that session. I saw Lando coming in with his McLaren uh, and uh, the, pit, the pit crew serviced the car and one of their mechanics told me stay away and I, I stayed away. But I waited for the car to stop and tried to get back there uh, to, take, uh, to take a shot of Lando being wheeled back into the pits, but I didn't realize that this was actually uh, a practice pit stop. So someone grabbed me from behind and pulled me back as Lando screamed past me. And the McLaren mechanic that initially told me to step back was really pissed with me. Uh, and I think this is the moment where I say, dear McLaren mechanic and dear McLaren team, I am really, really sorry that I did this. I am uh, really ashamed and I should have done this and I will never do it again. After that near miss, I needed some, some time to regroup. And I thought that I'm gonna go and, uh, and shoot at the last turn. Now, as, as I said earlier, the light was really gorgeous and we had these dark clouds behind, so I wanted to utilize these two these two things and i really wanted to go away from the pits because i really got scared and shaken so yeah these are the images that i took to enter the paddock the drivers uh, need to come through a tunnel uh, that leads to the paddock and many of the photographers uh, stay there and wait for them to take uh, some very interesting backlit images uh, and on, on occasion you can you can get away with uh, some very interesting some very interesting shots but you need many things to come together and first and foremost the driver need to be alone so that you have a, a shape and with the, the light coming from behind, you can really get these gold-like images. But uh, I, this time I decided that I'm not gonna spend too much time there and only briefly joined the, the photographers that were sitting, like there was a, a huge bunch sitting on the, on the stairs. And luckily, the, the little time I spent there, I got this uh, nice image of George Russell coming in, into the paddock. Before getting to that tunnel, the drivers arrive with their cars and many photographers wait to ambush them for interesting shots or not that interesting. It's a matter of opinion. But uh, I also uh, try to avoid sitting there and spending too much time there. But uh, again, on the, the small occasion that I was, uh, I was there actually, I managed to catch Lewis Hamilton wearing uh, this amazing sweater like I'm, I'm not a, a, a fan of fashion, but this one is really one to die for. On Saturday for the morning free practice session, the heavens really, really opened up. I was positioned on the tower opposed to the first turn and I was focusing on the huge spray that was coming out of the tires. It looked like this huge worm that was that was coming towards me and its head was like an actually small formula one car it was actually really really interesting to see how much water it they actually throw into into the air for qualifying i was on the inside of the chicane during that session again we had some really really gorgeous light and we had these really black dramatic clouds behind so i was I planned a really wide shot of the cars entering, um, entering the chicane with, uh, with the dark clouds behind. And I was panning with the hope that there will be, there will be a lightning 
at some point and I will be able to, to catch it, but unfortunately there wasn't one. For the last part of qualifying, I moved to turn four where I suspected some cars might go really wide at, uh, at the exit of the turn and over the curb. So that's what I was trying to, that's what I was trying to catch. In that particular place, cars are known to throw sparks, especially in this occasion, the McLaren and the Red Bull. On Sunday before the race, the paddock was really buzzing. It was jam packed with people. I spent some time there and I saw Aston Martin owner Lawrence Stroll entering the pits and I, I was able to get this, this image that I call the kingpin. Before the race we had the driver's parade and on this occasion we had the drivers being taken around the track in these really cool classic cars. Not surprisingly I saw and heard uh, Max Verstappen's fans booing Lewis Hamilton and he was trying to be as uh, as composed and as smiling as possible and there were a lot of Max Verstappen fans but there are also some very brave Lewis Hamilton fans among them for the first time in my photography career I was allowed on the grid before the actual main event and I want to show you this just there you go you can see this bad boy gave me access to to being on the grid and um, again as last time in austria i was really uh, really kind of scared and my main my main focus was not to get in the way of, uh, of the teams but uh, because this is a huge responsibility i started with something very important and it is this mechanic being cooled down with uh, some dry ice. Obviously very important work. I got this interesting shot of uh, Daniel Ricciardo with some heavy clouds over his head which uh, uh, serves as a metaphor about what is happening with him during his McLaren time. I saw Mattia Binotto who went over to Günther Steiner and uh, the two of them were discussing the newly updated Haas car that uh, Kevin Magnussen had for this race. Another person who had keen interest in the newly updated Haas car was uh, none other than the legendary designer Adrian Newey, analyzing in detail the Haas car that resembles basically a white Ferrari. Helmut Marko was overlooking the preparation of Max Verstappen's car and Christian Horner was giving some last minute interviews. Last but not least, I was able to get this shot of Charles Leclerc preparing for, for the start of the race and afterwards I needed to scram because I was on foot and I needed to get to turn two or perhaps turn three. For the main race, I decided to start at the exit of turn two now usually you know that things happen during braking and corner entry but on some occasions there has been some incidents uh, when the cars are exiting the turn so when I saw how many people were shooting the, the approach to the turn I said it doesn't really make sense to have one more monkey on that branch so I went for the outside initially it seems that my, my camera refused to focus because the, the first few images uh, were really bad but uh, later I was able to take this one of uh, Max being really down the field. Now, you know during qualifying he had some uh, power unit issues and he had to start way back at uh, I think he was 10th and Sergio was 11th. Mm. There was an incident on the start and the race was suspended for a few laps until the marshals were able to clean up the track. I got these, these few images of the marshals running around trying to get the, the carbon fiber of the, of the tarmac and one of the marshals actually fell maybe three times while trying to get away as fast as possible away from the track before the cams come around again. The newly updated house was damaged As I was shooting, it, it became obvious that Charles was catching George Russell 
and I knew there was going to be an attack and I kind of knew it's going to be on the first turn but until I got there the attack was already made and Charles was in front of the Mercedes driver but thankfully for me not for Charles I was able to be there just in time as Max Verstappen put on a really heavy attack over the Ferrari driver and managed to get ahead. I was wondering how to proceed from there and I decided to go down towards turn two and I could clearly see that uh, George Russell was, um, was about to attack the suffering Charles Leclerc. After this it became obvious that no more major position changes are going to occur so I ran down to, to the podium. For the celebrations I had decided to go above the podium and it turned out that many other people have decided the same thing. So I had the second row uh, all to myself and it was kind of tricky to work from there but I think I managed to get something out of it. All in all, that was my Hungarian Grand Prix. I got to see dear friends of mine, I got to work alongside some photographic legends, and I had tons of fun. I want to take this opportunity to thank Shell Bulgaria for helping me get there, and I want to say this really wasn't going to be possible without you. Thank you for watching, and see you at the races.